Okay, so uh, NUSTAR is uh, NASA's um, newest uh, high energy satellite. Um, it launched a little more than a year ago, and it's uh, operating very well. Um, I'm actually just going to tell you about a little part of the science from NUSTAR. This is about X ray binaries, and there's really a ton of science that's coming out of NUSTAR, um, and I'm only going to talk about, you know, as I say, a little piece of it. Um, so I'm going to start off with a couple slides um, just on NUSTAR and uh, its performance. Um, and then I'm going to talk about science topics for accreting black holes and neutron stars um, and tell you about some results from NUSTAR. Uh, then uh, I know I'm supposed to talk about the future. So my future uh, topic is going to be something that NUSTAR is going to look at, something we haven't looked at yet, but something that we're kind of excited about. Uh, we just haven't had an opportunity yet. Okay, so um, NUSTAR is the first focusing hard X-ray telescope uh, in orbit. Um, prior to New Star, there were a couple satellites that could image in, uh, in hard X-rays, but they used a coded, coded aperture mask technique. Uh, so with the coded aperture mask, um, it's really good for a large field of view. Um, and uh, you know, it makes images, but uh, very coarse images. Um, also, you have to use a very large uh, detector when you do coded aperture mask imaging. And, uh, and so that leads to very high backgrounds. Uh, in contrast, uh, New Star focuses the hard X-rays and uh, allows you to use a small detector. You have very low background and uh, very high sensitivity. Okay, so the uh, the kind of um, properties that everybody talks about for New Star are things like the angular resolution uh, and the sensitivity, and uh, you know those are really why New Star was created, and we use those in the X-ray binaries program. But a lot of our uh, targets are quite bright. Uh, and so for the bright ones, we emphasize some other properties that are very useful. One is the broad band pass, uh, 3 to 79 keV. Um, before launch, we only really knew that the instrument was going to work down to about 5 keV. And uh, with iron lines you know, being just a little bit above that, we were a little bit nervous that uh, we wouldn't be able to do that sort of science. Um, but uh, it turns out that the detectors really are operating well and going down to 3 keV, and so it's been really uh, great news for us. Um, also, the spectral resolution is, is, uh, is quite good. Um, this is not quite CCD resolution. You know, it's, it's 6 keV, it's 400 eV. A CCD would be more like 100 or 150, so it's not quite that good, but much better than proportional counters. And so this is basically we're getting high effective area and pretty good uh, spectral resolution. Um, and then the spectral resolution above 10 keV is unprecedented. Going to 900 eV at 60 keV is, is uh, you know, really, a, really a step forward. Um, and I should say these are full with half max numbers. I forgot to write that on the slide. Another thing that doesn't usually show up on the list of properties, but is very important uh, for our science, is the throughput. And so we can get 400 events uh, per second per module with no, no pileup. Um, so CCDs. You have to do all kinds of crazy things to avoid pileup. You usually have very low efficiencies for observing. We observe with high efficiency, high count rate, and uh, no serious systematic issues with our response matrix. Okay, so this is just a list of the science topics that we were going after. Uh, one is accretion disk reflection components. Um, so the idea here is that you've got a hard X-ray source above an accretion disk. Uh, the hard X-rays reflect off the accretion disk. Uh, and you have this characteristic component that has an iron line and an iron edge. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can then model this component to measure the spin of the black hole. Uh, so that's the idea here is you measure the inner radius of the accretion disk, and from that you can inf infer or constrain the, uh, the black hole spin. Uh, we've already got a couple of papers out on this. Uh, one is on an AGN, this is, so this is not my group, but uh, this is on an AGN. And then uh, this paper on GRS 1915 plus 105 was on Astro PH recently, so these are two results we already have out. Um, another uh, science topic that we're working on is cyclotron lines from accreting pulsars in high mass X-ray binaries. Uh, and we have a paper that's about to come out on this as soon as it's accepted. Um, also, NUSTAR provides the first opportunity to measure the hard X-ray spectrum uh, of quiescent low mass X-ray binaries. Um, finally, uh, type 1 X-ray bursts is another one of our science goals. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully, uh, this is my future topic, so I'll talk about that a little more at the end of the talk if I have time. Okay, so far we've, we've observed 15 uh, X-ray binaries with New Star, and this shows kind of the breakdown of the different targets. Um, we've observed five for purposes of uh, studying these reflection components. Uh, we've observed six uh, accreting pulsars. 
Uh, we observe the quiescent neutron star LMS X-ray binary, uh, so X4. Uh, a type 1 X-ray burster, uh, we just did a quick observation to check the state, and then uh, these two other observations. So, um, you know, new star emphasizes, emphasizes imaging, but for X-ray binaries, everything's a point source, so I really only have to show one image. Uh, and so here's your one new star image of a, of a point source, and every other X-ray binary is going to look the same. <laughs> so, it'd be great. I mean, if we find some extension, that'd be great, but so far, uh, point sources. All right. Okay, oh, I should, I should kind of organize also. So I'm, I'm really just gonna talk about three sources, the ones in red here. So SIGX1, uh, x one and SANX4 are the two, or the three uh, sources that I'm gonna cover uh, in these next slides. Okay, so um, this is the Cygnus X1 uh, reflection component. So what this shows is these are residuals um, when I fit the SIGX1 spectrum with a thermal disk component and a power law. So it's a very simple model. Um, and, uh, you know, then you show the residuals. Um, this shows new star in blue and black, and then we had simultaneous observations with Suzaku, and so the orange is uh, Suzaku. Uh, one, I think, kind of impressive statistic is that for new star, the source rate is 25 to 1,000 times the background rate for all bins up to 30 keV. So we're getting really incredible signal to noise uh, in these spectra. Um, and you can compare it to Suzaku and see uh, how much better it is. Um, let's see, so the features that I want you to see here are the broad iron K alpha emission line, so that's here, and then uh, a zoom in of that is here. Uh, the iron absorption edge, uh, which is just above it and here, uh, and then the hard X-ray bump. Uh, we're having an argument in our group whether it's a bump or a hump, but I'm gonna use bump. Um, and so that's what this thing is up here. Uh, we don't quite see it come back down, but we see the strong increase here that is the, uh, the uh, hard X-ray bump. Um, also, uh, for a lot of systems, you don't see any, any absorption, but for SIGX1, it's in a high mass system and it has a, um, a stellar wind from the companion. And so we actually have a narrow absorption line at 6.7 keV uh, from the material in, in the stellar wind. So, you can see a narrow line here, and you can see then how broad the emission line is in comparison. So we really are seeing a very broad uh, emission line from SIGX1. So when we model this, we constrain the black hole spin to be uh, greater than 0.83, uh, where zero is a non-rotating black hole and one is a maximally rotating black hole. Uh, and we, we constrain the inclination to be uh, greater than 40 degrees. And the reason I point out the inclination is that what we're measuring actually is where the, re the reflection component comes from. So this is the inner part of the disk. Um, but there's been a measurement uh, recently uh, of the binary inclination that says that it's 27.1 uh, uh, degrees with very small error bars. Um, so you can see that our constraint here is significantly different from the binary value. And so, you know, one possibility here is that we're actually seeing a misalignment between the orbital plane and the disk plane that there could be a warp in the disk. And uh, you know, this has been calculated before and there have been uh, MHD simulations to show that this can happen. Um, so it wouldn't be a complete surprise, but it'd be interesting to have uh, a real constraint uh, or a real system where you can point to that says this is definitely uh, a warp disk. Okay, so the new st neutron star connection I want to make is that um, we, uh, we are, we're also doing uh, reflection components in neutron stars. Um, the history here is a little bit, uh, I like guess, less certain than the black hole case. Um, for neutron stars, there have been iron lines seen in many systems, but it's been really unclear whether the iron line is uh, a broad line or whether it's multiple lines. And new star really seems to be showing us that, uh, that uh, at least in this uh, system, SIR X1, we're seeing a broad uh, emission line. So this shows uh, residuals um, where we fit uh, above and below um, uh, the iron line region, and you can see a strong residual here and a broad line. And this is preliminary, uh, it's, being, it's work being done by John Miller, um, but uh, there should be a paper out uh, fairly soon on that. Okay, um, and I think one interesting thing is that, you know, if we can do this, then we can constrain the properties of the inner disk. Uh, and the inner disk, if you calculate it, is very close to the neutron star radius. So you really get good constraints, you know, a good upper limit on the neutron star radius from this uh, technique. Okay, so the last source I want to talk about is SENX4. Uh, this is moving on from reflection to quiescent low mass X-ray binaries. 
Um, so the reason we chose to, to observe CENX4 is that uh, it's the closest um, quiescent neutron star LMS X-ray binary. Um, it had two outbursts in 1969 and 1979, but it's been in quiescence ever since. It's been observed many times in the, uh, the soft uh, X-ray band, um, you know, up to 10 keV. And uh, it's always got a flux that's around 10 to the minus 12. Actually, there's, there's quite a range of fluxes, but it, uh, its average flux over you know, the last 20 years has been something like 10 to the minus 12 ergs per square centimeter per second, uh, which corresponds to a luminosity of about 2 times 10 to the 32. So this is quite a faint source. Um, the spectrum always shows a thermal component, which is seen here, and then a hard component that extends to higher energy, which is another reason we wanted to look at it with New Star. The origin of the black body is, is fairly well known. It's you know, actually a thermal emission from the neutron star surface. Uh, the hard component, it's less clear what that is. And so that we really wanted to take a look at New Star and see uh, what the spectrum looks like there. And so this shows the spectrum that we have. Uh, with, we, we observed simultaneously with XMM and New Star. So um, this is the XMM spectrum. This uh, in red and black is the New, New Star spectrum. And we see clear evidence for a turnover in the spectrum. So uh, with just XMM, it's just a power law. You can't measure any turnover. But uh, just above the XMM band, New Star uh, starts to see a turnover. And we constrain the temperature, or the, sorry, the uh, cutoff energy to be about 11 uh, keV. We're still discussing possible interpretations for this. Um, uh, if it is Comptonization, then this would indicate a coronal temperature. But you can see how hard the spectrum is, uh, index of 1.1. Uh, cut off of 11 keV. This is kind of an unusual corona. This is, uh, okay, thank you. I am just about done. Um, so, uh, moving on to the last topic, uh, just quickly is the, um, the future observation that we want to do with the X-ray burster. Uh, we actually tried to observe 1820 minus 30 and didn't see any bursts, but we're going to try it again when it's in the right state. Um, what's been seen before is actually evidence from XT observations for an absorption line uh, during X-ray bursts that could be from material uh, that's processed uh, by the nuclear reactions. Um, if we did confirm the presence of an absorption edge, that'd be very important for uh, constraining both the, uh, the material that's produced during X-ray bursts and also uh, we might see a redshift that would tell us uh, about the redshift at the new neutron star surface. Um, so I will put up my summary, and um, I think I'll stop there. Uh, with your angular resolution, I mean, shouldn't you be able to uh, resolve the Crab Nebula? Yeah. So uh, when I was saying everything is a point source, I was talking about X-ray binaries. Okay. But the Crab is resolved, um, and uh, uh, CASA is another source that's been observed. When are we going to see the Crab? Have, have you, um, you haven't shown that yet, right? CASA, that... So the CRAB paper, I'm not sure what the, what the status of the CRAB paper is. The CASA paper is uh, being refereed right now. So okay. uh, I think that'll be out fairly soon. Um, but yeah, hopefully okay. the CRAB soon after. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Roger. Just a quick one. Uh, <clears throat> you didn't say anything about cycl cyclotron line work. Is there anything interesting going on there? Yeah, so one thing we were, we were hoping for was that uh, we might see some structure in the line uh, you know, with a better energy resolution. And, uh, we have a really nice measurement of Hercules X1 and Bale X1, and Hercules X1 is an extremely smooth uh, line, which obviously tells us something, but uh, uh, not something terribly exciting. Um, and then Bale X1, uh, we have, uh, I would say, a little bit more exciting results there. The um, fundamental line has been very hard to measure with previous satellites, but we get a clear measurement of the fundamental, and uh, we've got interesting ratios in the depth of the harmonic versus the fundamental, and uh, that should be coming out pretty soon as well.